G'day and welcome to yet another episode of Built by Dan and another installment in the GT40 kit build. In today's episode, I'm going to cover off on something that a few of you picked up. A few of my viewers seem to be quite observant and spotted that the rear suspension seems to be resolved in a couple of my recent episodes. So I'm going to run you through how I rectified the issues that I found in the rear suspension install and I'll show a couple of photos of the process because I wasn't able to film the whole thing. It was quite awkward. Um, you may recall that there's usually a brace plate that sits across the top here that I had to remove to get in there. And by the time I sat in the middle and tried to get power tools and whatnot in there to, to trim the, um, the chassis panel here, uh, there was just no real opportunity to be able to get a decent view for the camera. So if you haven't seen the rear suspension install episode, I'll put a link to it up in the top corner of this video if you'd like to go and watch that before watching this episode. But essentially, when I went to install the coilover, one, I had an issue with the bracket and the mounting holes being in the wrong location in the, in the bracket that was supplied by the manufacturer. And secondly, there wasn't enough clearance to allow the spring to be able to actually compress. So whilst it's in full extension, I could basically just manage to install it. It was sort of just touching uh, on this vertical section at the back and there was just enough clearance uh, behind it for the, the plate to sit between two springs. But as soon as the suspension goes to, the springs go to compress, uh, it then would hit that up that vertical plate and would just rub so the suspension couldn't actually function correctly. After pursuing the manufacturer for some time as to what the issue might be um, in the hope that maybe it was something they'd come across before, uh, I wasn't able to actually get any resolution. Um, I've spoken to a number of other builders and really that's how I was able to resolve this issue uh, speaking to a couple of builders, uh, one of them even coming out to my house to, uh, to have a look and just see from their perspective whether they could spot anything that I may have installed incorrectly. Uh, in the end, we checked dimensions between the stock chassis, the Graziano chassis, which is what I have, which has been widened by 100 mil, so 50 mil each side, two inches each side. And the geometry and everything was correct. It was simply just that 100 millimeters or four inches wider. So there's no reason why it's not working. But yeah, in the absence of any support from the manufacturer, basically you made the decision to just clearance the cutout in the, this vertical plate to give myself enough clearance for the shock to be able to operate correctly. In order to do that, I needed to trim about 10 millimeters or say half an inch off this rear vertical edge and about 15 to 20 millimeters. So say almost three quarters of an inch to an inch off the, off the top. So to increase the height of that arch, uh, it's worked. Um, it took a bit of effort. It was awkward, but just using some basic tools, uh, I was able to mark everything out. So I had a really nice sort of neat line to follow and, and trim it all back so that it looked like it came from the factory like that. I didn't want it to look like a hack job um, that I had had to modify it or anything like that. It needed to look like it came that way for me to be happy with it. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Uh, what I might do is I might disconnect the top of this shock and just drop it down to show you how it now looks uh, without the shock blocking the view. And I'll then step you through the process of what I did to, to mark it all out, cut it, trim it back and, and finish it all off to a standard that I was happy with. This is the cutout as it's been trimmed. Basically, it used to sit somewhere down here, as I said earlier, 15 to 20 millimeters, and this rear section came out a bit wider. In order to try and get a nice sort of clean layout, I actually used this really wide roll of masking tape, essentially. It's like a paper tape. 
It's one foot or 300 millimeters wide. And that allowed me to just put a sheet all over that piece of the chassis. I cut out the original um, arch and then just marked out my 10 millimeters and 15 to 20 millimeters on the top so that I knew where I was cutting to. I then used just an angle grinder with a metal cutoff disc uh, to cut the vertical section. I left sort of a couple of millimeters, uh, just didn't want to try and cut right on the line. I gave myself a little bit of room to then be able to you know, trim it back nicely to the line. I'll insert some pictures um, through, as I'm describing this, uh, just for a bit of references to how I went about it. So angle grinder to cut the vertical sections. I then used just a hacksaw to trim around the arch. Uh, now it, this probably could have used something else. I probably could have used um, you know, a, sort of a reciprocating saw or a jigsaw or something but I was probably just more comfortable using a hacksaw as a, a hand tool um, where I felt like I had a bit better control over it. Yes, it took longer, uh, but I'd rather be on the safe side than, than mess it up. So once that was cut out and there's still a few millimeters of material until I actually got to the line that I had marked, I then just used a sanding attachment on my drill similar to this one, in fact it was this one, <laughs> to just sand around the inside and trim it all the way back to the line. I was then able to just smooth it off with some finer sandpaper afterwards so I can comfortably run my hand around there and not be concerned about any cuts. I can see that there's probably a little bit of a wave there still. I might trim it up a bit more later on but all in all I'm pretty happy with how it's come up. And obviously the important thing is, is that the coilover can be installed and it will operate uh, at its full range of travel without interfering with this chassis panel. So with the, the cutout in the chassis resolved, my last issue was to resolve the lower shock mount bracket. Now, I've got welded in bosses in the inside tube of my chassis, but the holes in the factory supplied bracket are on the outside tube of the chassis. So in order for me to be confident that the bracket was being mounted in the right location, give or take maybe a millimeter, um, I very carefully transferred the drilled out holes in the bracket from the front to the rear and then drilled them out so that I, um, I was confident with the position there. All in all, it, it now works, it functions. Is it correct? I don't know. I haven't been able to get that confirmation from the manufacturer, but it works. It uses the solid aluminium mounting bosses in the chassis that, were that are welded into the chassis provided by the manufacturer. It uses the manufacturer's bracket, um, I can only assume that the bosses are in the correct location. They've just put them in the inside tube rather than the outside tube. I may consider drilling out the chassis and putting another two bolts in through those original holes and, and putting a welded in boss in the other tube of the chassis down the track. Um, it probably isn't needed, but I think for my peace of mind, I might like to have that in there just as an additional precaution. Um, but yeah, it at least allows me to be able to move on with the build knowing that the rear suspension is now resolved. And if I got some tires mounted to my wheels that I could actually set the, the vehicle on the ground and it, it would actually be a roller. So with that resolved, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody that provided comments or advice or suggestions on how I might be able to resolve this issue. Uh, Quite often I'd find myself sitting on the couch of an evening, have a look at through the comments section, see another comment and go, oh, yeah, I see what you mean there. That kind of makes sense in my head. I'd run out to the garage, have a look at the different parts of the components that are being referred to, and just try and verify whether that would actually solve the issue. So I, I didn't sort of just respond and say, no, nah, that doesn't work. I, I actually went and investigated each and every comment um, just to make sure that it wasn't going to be viable or to see if it was going to be viable. 
in the hope that maybe it would resolve the issue. So thanks for all your support. I know you can only see so much on the video. Um, and obviously for me sitting here and actually working on it, I see things from a slightly different perspective, but all the comments and, and support have been great. Um, and you know, I probably couldn't have got to this stage without the support of the, I suppose the YouTube community that are watching my videos as well as the local GT40 community and the other builders that I'm in contact with. So thank you. Now that that's resolved, uh, I guess I'll move on to a bit of a general update as to where I'm at with the build. So what's next for the GT40 build? Well, I think next I'm gonna tackle the roll bar. I have had it mocked up here and you've probably seen it clamped on for quite some time in recent episodes. And I just have not got around to actually finalizing that install. I need to insert some aluminum blocks into that top tube and I need to drill and tap a number of screws to hold that roll bar onto the chassis. The stays are obviously fitted off, but I need to finish that, um, add a lock nut to the rod end there. Once that roll bar is installed, I then have my pivot bolt for the seat belt. So I have started marking out the holes and locations for the seat belt uh, retractor bracket. I have had to do a little bit of clearancing so that the, uh, the bolt that holds the retractor on can actually stick through the chassis there. So I'll get that sorted. I will need to pull out the fuel tanks because I do need to drill some holes and bolt through this sill panel. I have started looking at marking out my seat mounting holes. So I'm just starting with the passenger seat because if I mess it up, I could probably live with it for the passenger, but I don't want to stuff up the driver's side, that's for sure. So I'm going to start with the passenger side. I've got some shear plates that bolt in from underneath the vehicle. Um, I'll drill out the front, then mark and drill out the rear, and hopefully it'll be in a good position where I get full use of the seat slide to be able to move the seat forward and back. I have fitted off the steering boss and steering wheel just temporarily. Uh, we just wanted to play around a little bit with the overall steering rotation, I suppose you could call it, the steering limits for the vehicle. As you can see here, trying to stand in line with the, the back edge of that front rim. It doesn't give a lot of clearance between the back of the rim and the control arm. So my concern is that once tires are fitted, that tires will actually rub on that control arm. I have about one and a quarter turns of the steering wheel to full lock. So I just want to get it resolved. It's not critical, but I want to try and look into these things and get them resolved before I get too far along. If I have to pull the rack out and adjust the stops that control the limit, um, I want to do that now rather than when the vehicle's almost fully assembled. A couple of other things, I'm waiting on some tools so that I can finish off my front brake lines. I've got the, the flexible brake lines fitted off to the caliper with the banjo fitting. They then run into a hard line that runs through that front chassis section. Um, the ones that were supplied didn't fit great, so I've purchased some new um, hose or pipe, and I'm gonna form up my own to make sure that that fits. Um, other, another thing I'm waiting on is just a four-way adapter fitting from the manufacturer because they only supplied me with three-way fittings, so I can't fit off my brake pressure switch. Obviously, the radiator and thermo fans have been fitted off, but it's now sort of getting to that point where I'm looking at the nitty-gritty and fitting off all the other sort of accessories. So, in the front chassis panels here, I actually need to, one, install my gas struts, which will bolt in this hole down here and then up onto the front body panel. And there's also a couple of horns that need to be mounted, and they recommend mounting them just on the inside of the panel here. But I needed to fit the front clip and then try and get my front vent insert 
sitting in there to make sure that I actually had enough clearance. And in doing that, I found that I've got another issue in that the front vent panel actually needs to be trimmed back so that it, because it currently interferes with the bottom of the radiator and thermo fan. So just trying to look at what to move on to next, I guess. This is probably the sort of thing that I don't normally show. It's a lot of the, the stuff that I do behind the scenes, uh, but don't really integrate into my videos. There is a lot of prep work, um, and I'm kind of at a point now where the build manual really doesn't provide a lot of thorough guidance as to where everything else goes and how you mount the remaining components. Um, and obviously there's still quite a bit to go until this vehicle is, uh, is complete and fully assembled. Another item that I'm working on is the air conditioning unit. So you can see here, I've removed the vents. I have a, like a little plenum, I guess you could call it, a plate that goes on the front there. And that's what the air conditioning hose will come out of and then go to the vents in the, um, in the dash and also for a demister. Playing around with the wiring for that, um, see how it all connects, how it connects to the switches, and that will then feed into the switch mounting into the dash. So I know I'm sort of trying to progress a lot of things at the moment, but I am sort of just bouncing around a bit because like I said, there isn't really a lot of clear guidance in the manual. So I'm just trying to find something that I can progress that I don't feel like I'm gonna get jammed uh, later on when I go to then do the next step. So the air conditioning panel mounts in the passenger footwell up on the underside of the dash panel and there really isn't a lot of room in there. So it's like, do I progress that? And then potentially it's in the way of something else that I need to run in, in the, that area. Um, it kind of gets to a point where you just have to progress something, I suppose, but it will just sit in up underneath this panel here. It is a very large air conditioning unit when you consider the small footwell of the GT40. Uh, but I think to be comfortable with that, I would need to progress the dash and the dash needs to be trimmed a fair bit in order for it to fit properly. So I think that's sort of where I'm heading. I'll look to get the roll bar sorted. I'll get the seats bolted in, the seat belt retractor brackets installed. And then I think I might move on to the dash, getting that positioned in the vehicle, trimmed down as necessary. And that will then give me an idea as to where the dash sits and how much clearance I have under the dash for these various components. So that's where I'm at and that's where I'm hoping to head for the next couple of episodes. Thank you for tuning into this episode and I look forward to seeing you in another couple of weeks.